you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far. But unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about.
the interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, are you now? Why don't you come down and let me take a look at you? Great job. You gave away the element of surprise. Good luck, hero. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. You weren't kidding when you said you were here to kill me. I know. You brought a knife with you and everything. But you don't have to try and kill me. You could always toss that scrap of metal to the ground and give the two of us a chance to talk things out. She makes a compelling point. What if we didn't kill her? What if we just dropped the blade and talked? Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Then I'm not talking to you. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurt! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath. 
equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here, either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. Two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps, her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. That's fine. It doesn't matter if he can hear us. The only thing that matters is marching up to that cabin and winning. That's the spirit. There's no point in squabbling when the real threat is just up that hill. It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. Like I said, we've just met for the first time, you and I. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We did our best with the information we were given, and we did kill her. And yet you still died, didn't you? So congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We killed the princess, the princess killed us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? Ugh, enough with the talking. We've got a fight to win. Nothing else matters. I couldn't agree more. The cabin and your destined confrontation with the princess awaits. Just be quick about it. Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her, don't trust her, just go in, do your job, and save the world.
She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. Oh, this is maddening. Why do you keep asking questions? There's nothing wrong with getting the full picture of what's going on here. Sure there is. It's wasting time and energy that would be better spent fighting. People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh, I didn't know we were special. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. What else would we even need to know? We've got all the reason we need for a rematch. Exactly. The less you know about her, the better. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. Are you sure about that? The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. See? Even the cabin has the right idea. Let's get moving! The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You already wasted so much time in the woods. Who even cares if there's a mirror? As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. The world is depending on you. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. 
you reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone, so all of us can stop arguing about it and get to fighting. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive, with an almost sulfuric odour to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally! It's been ages since I've had a good fight. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. And you brought your little knife, too. Yes! I'm going to have fun breaking you into little pieces. Okay, fine. Let's say for a moment I believe you. For all we know, whatever happened to you last time was just a fluke, and beyond that, do you know who doesn't remember anything that happened last time? Me. I don't remember what happened last time. Uh, are you okay? Of course I'm not okay. As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. Not all of us have the luxury of jumping over to a parallel universe the second we die. You look exactly the same. <laughs> oh, I remember you all right. Best three minutes of my life. So, why don't we do it again? See? She wants to fight us again. There's no reason for us to stand around talking. What is there to unpack? I was dead and now I'm not and the same goes for you. There. Unpacking done. Don't you get it? We've been given free reign to wail on each other. Forever. Couldn't have said it better myself. Finally ready to complete your destined task, you launch off the whetstone floor of the basement and catapult yourself headlong towards the princess. Here we go. Let's make this count. Oh, we'll make it count all right. As you bridge the gap, your blade slashes across the princess's chest, splitting skin and drawing a jagged line of bright red blood. But she's unfazed by your onslaught. Her expression barely changes as her fist collides with your ribs, cracking them like twigs and driving you right back down to the basement floor. You can hear her chains snap as you struggle to recover from the impact. She almost looks disappointed in us. 
Wh why is she disappointed in us? Oh, you don't actually get it, do you? That knife may be sharp, but you clearly don't want to kill me. It's not fun if you hesitate. It's not fun if you try to trick me and make me bleed out. It's only fun if you go straight for the heart. You need to put everything you have into seeing me dead. Or what's the point? So don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Kill me. Don't let her get in your head. Reincarnation or not, this world needs you to win. She's huge, but that probably means she's slower than us. Take it slow. Think it through. Don't panic. Bleeding her out is our best course of action. Don't listen to them. She understands something that they don't. The only way to win, the only way out of this, is through her. If that's your plan, then that's your plan. You push off the ground, ignoring the pain in your ribs as you charge at the princess once more. You can feel flesh give way before a sudden impact blunts your momentum, your weapon tightly lodged in the bone of her arm. She grins at you from behind her guard. Pull it out. We'll try a different angle. No, we can do this. Just keep pushing. We're not going to win if our weapon's stuck in her arm. You pull back on the blade's hilt, doing your best to free it from its sinewed prison. But as you tug the blade free, the princess slams you down onto her knee. It collides with your ribs, and you feel them splinter, cracking like wet wood from the impact and you find yourself in mid-air, effortlessly tossed across the room. You hit the floor, your ribs complaining painfully, but you can feel the hilt in your grip. You still have your weapon. You push yourself off the ground and attack the princess, trying to bait an opening. You do your best to outplay her, slashing out and leaving red cuts in the tattered remains of her white dress. But you have little room to manoeuvre. For every glancing blow you manage to land, she slams you against the wall in retaliation, each impact threatening to be the last. This weak little dance isn't working. Just toughen up and overpower her. She's throwing us around like a ragdoll. I think overpowering her is a little out of the question. Did you think you could stop me with a few cuts? All this dancing around is doing nothing but annoying me. I own this place, and I own you. The princess's arm shoots forward, her palm wrapping around your head, fingers gripping your skull. How disappointing. She squeezes, the pressure unbearable as her fingers dig into your scalp. The last thing you hear is the unsettling crack of your skull, and the sickening churn of what was your grey matter. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the wood. If you weren't so damned afraid of what she'd do to you, we wouldn't have died back there. Fear is good. Fear keeps us alive. We died because you didn't have enough of it. So what? You'd have us cower in a corner? No. But that place suits her better than it suits us. She's big. We can't hope to find holes and openings down there. We need more room if we're going to survive. Are you suggesting luring her into the woods? Do you have any idea how dangerous that would be? If you lose sight of her, if she manages to slip away, that's it. Game over for everyone, yourself included. Are you not challenging us on all the looping? Have you known about it the whole time? Are you the same one we've been talking to since the beginning? Sorry to disappoint what I'm sure must feel like a grand revelation, but that's not what's going on here. We've never met. Then what is going on? What's going on 
is that you'd only be saying the things you've been saying if you'd already been here, and if you'd already seen things you weren't supposed to have seen. It doesn't matter. We could go in circles forever. I don't like staying still for too long. Let's get to the cabin, see this through. It's good to know that at least one of you is still capable of reason. We may have the same destination, but we're not the same. You are still an other, and I don't trust you. Well, fortunately, you have an entire trip through the woods to reconsider that. There's nothing to reconsider. We're all for violence here. Are we? I haven't signed off on anything yet. Violence is the answer here, but the method is equally important to the act. You can't let her leave the cabin. It's like I said, all just circles. Instinct tells me we need space, and I trust instinct. Nothing else to say. Not for me. It's evidence of one of many ticking clocks. You can't let her spread any further. Things are always changing. She changed, the cabin changed, we've changed. Why wouldn't the woods change too? Because they're not supposed to have changed. This is supposed to be a path in the woods. If it's not, it means something's gone horribly wrong. You're the chooser. The best we can do is advise. But we can, these are just powerless thoughts and opinions. You don't need to let them drag you and the world to ruin. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up the hill at the cabin. I hope you've given serious thought to your predicament. No last advice for us? No words of warning? From what I gather, you've heard it all before. There's no use screaming into the wind. I don't know. Screaming sounds pretty good right about now. I could use a little catharsis. Catharsis is for when we're finished. For now, we need to hold it out in front of us. Something to chase. The interior of the cabin is suffocatingly tight, more of a glorified tunnel than a building. Its stone walls squeeze against your sides, leaving you no choice but to press forward. The only furniture of note is an iron altar jutting out from the wall, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. See? We have even less space than before. We need space or she'll kill us. And the only space is out there. Take it! Maybe it'll go away again. For something to go away, it would have to be there to begin with. And let me assure you, there's no mirror here. The only thing at the end of the room is the door to the basement. No use arguing. Mirror or not, we need to be there. The why we pick doesn't matter. I agree with the freak. Let's get a move on already. And worst comes to worst, we can smash it. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. There's no overcoming her without it. We need every part of us to survive, and that steel claw is as much a part of us as any. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it, as if you don't see it. You're rather committed to the bit, aren't you? The door's right there, it's right in front of you. This really is just like last time. It smells of nothing, yet it's still there. 
You bring your fist crashing down against the door leading to the basement. It swings open, scraping against the floor as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? It was in our way, and now it's not. That's all that matters. Before you is what may as well be a sheer cliff face. There are enough footholds that you'll be able to clamber your way to the bottom, but it will require careful effort. The air hissing up from below is warm and wet, like the breath of an enemy locked in close quarters. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, bold and fierce and impatient, echoes from the chamber below. Do you have more fight in you than last time? That was such a disappointing show. I know you can do better than that. Go to her. Rile her up. If she's angry, she'll make mistakes. That's not how this works. I'm all chained up, remember? How about you come down here and fight me? Those chains were nothing to her last time. They'll be nothing to her this time. But we need to show ourselves first to make her boil over. Fine by me. You've nowhere to go but down. You start the difficult journey, gripping the stone, lowering yourself foot by grueling foot. But soon, there is solid ground beneath you. Remember, every crack and crevice will need to be faster than her. You turn to face what lies at the end of the narrow tunnel. The princess, imposing and tightly muscled, grins back at you from the darkness. Her face widens into a broad grin. There you are, knife in hand. How thrilling! Attack me, bleed me, twist the blade in my flesh, break your bones against my body. I want a real challenge this time. We can't get that close. She'll kill us in the tight space, steel claw or not. Make her come to us, stand beyond her chains, and let her become frenzied. She'll break them. Then we run. I really don't like the sound of this. It's the only way we live. Well, what are you waiting for? If we're gonna do this right, you can't be scared. You need to want this as much as I do. So go on. Make the first move. Don't keep me waiting! The princess scoffs. Oh, you're up to something tricky, aren't you? You're teasing me with what I want, but I'm sick of waiting. I'm not going to let you give me another bad fight. I'm going to get what I want. Bloody desire in her eyes, the princess rushes forward, ignoring her chains as they bend and snap. Without hesitation, you turn back the way you came and scramble up the ledge towards the tunnel entrance. As you near the top, hands desperately clawing at jagged stone, you glance back. The princess is right on your heels. She doesn't bother to scale the wall as you do, instead digging deep into the rock of the cliff face with her fingertips in her rabbit pursuit. Anywhere you go, I will follow! Good. You reach the ledge and hoist yourself up into the tunnel, the cabin door finally in sight, at once within your grasp and infinitely distant. What is all of this for? What's the point? You and I are always going to end in violence, so why bother to run? I know what I am. Why can't you be the same? Little bird, little bird, where do you think you're going? We're almost there. Don't 
something about almost. We're there when we're there. And we'll take the fight with us. Your skin hums tight with adrenaline as you burst through the cabin door and roll onto the grass. You glance back at the cabin as the princess, singular in her desire to destroy you, explodes through the doorway. You are walking a dangerous path. If you waver once, it's all over. So get it right. There's nothing left to slow me down. Do you think this is better for you? Do you think this space gives you an edge? Then show me! Show me that you've been worth all the room you've taken up in my head! Do it! Be swift, strike true, be where she's not, let your body move you. Oh, we'll see about that. Traps aren't real. The only thing that's real is bloodshed. She charges, fully determined to end you in a single move. Left, now. As the princess strikes, your body swerves to the left. She overextends, stumbling as her balance shifts unexpectedly. Strike. Before you can finish the thought, you lash out, the blade slicing through her leg. She turns to swing again. Right. You move out of the way, but this time it's not quite as clean. You can feel a bruise already blooming where her elbow crashed into flesh. It's nothing. A scratch. Yes, it could be worse. And you manage to gift her another cut in return. I'll be damned. We're actually gonna pull this off, aren't we? You just might. But don't let it get to your head. Not until it's over. Yes, finally! This is the hole I felt in my heart! This is what I've needed! This is what I've been missing! This is how it always needed to end! Both of us giving it our all, beating and bleeding each other to death! The two of you engage in a devastating flurry of blows, each of you wounding the other again and again. She's stronger, but you're faster, and the deeper the both of you fall into your lethal dance, the more your edge shines over hers. She's slowing down, blood pouring from wounds, splattering at her feet, leaving her weak and unsteady. More! Keep going! We can't stop! Now! You spy an opening, but this time she's waiting for you. She lets you sink the blade deep, trapping you in place long enough to wrap you in her impenetrable arms. You're slammed to the ground. Nothing! These blows are nothing to us! But her gambit wasn't enough to close the gap. It wasn't enough to kill you. She stares you down, coughing up a splash of blood as she gasps for breath. You've outplayed me, haven't you? Something feels wrong. Something. And? She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror up there. Why is it here? Why now? He is. Does that mean the world ended? It hasn't ended. We're still here. The world didn't end. We're still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. That thing reeks of death. Screw the mirror! We just need to find the princess! You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. like it's mocking us. 
Let's just stay still. I'm begging you, don't do this. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? Thoughts without connections. A dim and nascent network. I wish to be more. A person. A set of eyes witnessing from one perspective. I think that you are more like me than you are like a person. We are oceans reduced to shallow creeks. Yes, nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond, perspectives to make my own. This one yearns to grow and struggle, even now I feel a will pushing against mine, not realizing that we are one. She will make for a fierce heart. Do not mourn her. We will provide her with the growth she fought for. How can the world have ended if we are talking? I'm sorry. There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. I promise that it doesn't hurt. You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. I know only that they are. She is part of me, and part of me is her. You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. Nothing as we are, but I know that there are worlds beyond us and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole, and perhaps then we will know our freedom.
I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. Everything until we meet again. More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. Then we will be here forever, as we are now, unfinished, dry, hollow. You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. sprawling and unilluminated. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. 